Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the All About Artichokes class today. I'm Stephanie Jordan. I'm the local food program manager at Sustainable Solano. And I'm really glad all of you are here joining us for this cooking class. This is one of many classes that we are doing from now until hmm, March, maybe even June of next year, 2022. 2022. So um, we're glad to have you here and we're happy if any of you guys have been with us before and are joining us again. Um, so this is also um, part of a series to raise awareness of specialty crops that are grown here in Solano County and in California in general. Um, we talk a lot about our local farmers who grow in Solano County and ways that you can access the products that they're growing. And um, so we're happy to have you here. Um, before I get going on our artichokes, I just have a couple more things. Um, I do want to acknowledge and honor the indigenous people who have inhabited our land for generations. Um, the unceded territory of California is home to about 200 tribal nations, and so we invite you to check out a map that we have found, which uh, will enable you to learn more about where you live, and I believe Allison is providing that in the chat. So thank you, Allison. And one other little housekeeping item is that if you have questions, you're welcome to post those in the chat as well while we're going along. And then we will read those back at the end. Or if you want, you can also raise your hand at the end and we will unmute you. And then you can talk directly to me. So either way is fine. It's always a lot of fun. So I'm gonna be doing two recipes today. And I'm also gonna show a couple other ways to prepare artichokes. We're gonna cover kind of a lot of different methods and, and talk about a lot of different um, you know, procedures for dealing with them. And I'm also hoping that once I get the first recipe into the oven, we'll go out to my backyard where I have a couple of artichoke plants growing. So if any of you are joining us from outside California and perhaps have never seen how these things grow, I have a couple of examples for you. So we'll hope that the technology gods are with us and my camera does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> so, all right. So the first one is one of my favorite ways of preparing artichokes. Um, these are actually like a part of a thistle family. So, you know, they, they do kind of look like the vegetable, um, you know, they've got vitamins and antioxidants, like a lot of other vegetables, but they are, um, it's actually a thistle. So this first recipe um, is roasting. And what some of you might know about artichokes is that they tend to turn brown quickly. So what I have here in my little setup is a big giant bowl of water with uh, lemon juice and also just the spent lemon halves. And I'm going to add a little bit more to it, actually, because um, I think I need more, more acid. So if you ever see the term acidulated water, that's basically what this is. It's just water with an acid added to it. <clears throat> and in today's case, I'm using a lot of lemons. And the lemons will help prevent uh, the artichokes from turning brown. So once I cut them, I dip them in here. What you can also do is just use your spent lemon halves and just kind of rub it on the outside of the cut area. That also works as well. Okay, so for our roasted one, um, I'm just gonna do a half recipe of this particular um, version. This one calls for four artichokes, eight to 10 ounces each. My artichokes were pretty huge. I'm just gonna do two artichokes and put them in this smaller pan. And I'm just using, um, you know, in restaurant land, this is a, a half hotel pan. Um, any kind of like nine by 13 or roasting pan will work fine. So I've got my first one done and I'm gonna demonstrate kind of how I handle the second one. So what I found is that a bread knife works better than a chef knife for cutting these up. So I've got a serrated bread knife here. Um, I'm gonna trim off the stem. However, the stems, um, if they're not too thick, you can peel them and keep them on and eat those as well. <clears throat> for this one, I'm going to trim it off, and then I'm just going to remove some of the really tough outer leaves, and I'm going to save some of them, though, because I want to just kind of explain what you can do with some of these also. So I have a little bowl over here. Some, I'm, some that look really big and tough, I'm going to put in my compost bucket, and others will go into a separate bowl. So here I am with my stem trimmed and then the outer leaves trimmed, and then I'm going to take my, my serrated knife, you guys can see this. And I'm gonna kind of saw off, I would say the top 
third of the artichoke. So here's where I find that the, the serrated part works well, because these are tough. All right, so that is gonna get discarded. And then I'm gonna I'll dip it in my water here really quick. Then I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm going to cut it down in half. So I'm kind of flipping it over and going through top to bottom. And so now what I have exposed is the two halves, but I still have the little choke that's in there. And that's the furry part that you don't want to eat. <laughs> There's a reason why they call it the choke, it would kind of choke you. So I'm just going to take a little sharp spoon and scoop the fuzzy part out. I'm going to have a, my bowl, bucket over here on the side. So I'm going to you kind of have to go at this a couple of different directions. So you might want to start from down here and go up sometimes, and then I turn it over and then I kind of work down from like the, the purple leaf part down toward me. If there's any little leaves in there that come out, that's fine. You can just pull them out too. So you're creating just a little tiny cavity here in the, the kind of toward the base of the half of the artichoke, you can see there, okay? And that's pretty much it for the roasted. So I'm just gonna do my second half and put it in my roasting pan. And meanwhile, my oven is up pretty hot. It's at 475, which seems warmer than usual for roasting. Um, if you have a convection oven, you could set it at 450 and then turn on your convection fan. Typically there's about a 25 degree difference between um, with the fan on and the fan off. So, but you want the oven hot for this, okay. Now, I've got my four halves in here, and <clears throat> they're a little bit different sizes, so I'm just going to have to cook them until the bigger ones are done here. Looks like I have a lemon seed that made it in there. Get out. All right, so I'm going to dip them one more time into my, my acidulated water here, and then it's okay if they're a little wet for this, because we want to have a little bit of steaming happen. All right, so there they are. Next step is I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil. <clears throat> And I'm gonna just, you know, flip them, kind of rub the olive oil onto the inside parts. Just a couple of tablespoons or so. I'm gonna rub that around. And I also want to get a little bit of oil, you know, if the leaves are separating a little bit from the top, I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit in there so that it goes inside, just a tad, okay. I'm going to kind of rub it around here and kind of scoop up some of the liquid to get it inside the leaves because that's going to help with this cooking process as well. This is kind of part roasting, part steaming, I would say. Okay, now my hands are all full of oil. So my last couple steps on here is I'm going to just give it some salt and pepper. And again, if you want to try to get some of the salt and pepper inside the leaves, that's always a good Good idea. Pull, pull it away. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And now they are going to go cut side down in the pan. So I'm going to flip these over and then I'm going to cover it with foil tightly. So I want to have, I want to use, um, the heavy duty kind of foil, the thick stuff, because we want this to be pretty well sealed so that the steam stays inside. All right, so that is that, pretty simple preparation. This is gonna go into the oven for at least half an hour. That's why I kinda wanted to get it going now. All right, and then we know that it's done when we take a paring knife and we just kind of, um, I'm gonna flip them over so that the cut side is up and I'm just gonna pierce it with a paring knife and if it slides in really easily, then we're good to go. Another sign is if the outer leaves kind of pull off easily if I use tongs and just kind of you know gently pull it off. So then those are good. Um, there is a really quick aioli that I will make um, a little bit later on while we're waiting for the next recipe to, to cook. So, all right, that was pretty simple. So the next one that we're gonna do is marinated artichokes. Um, this is just kind of a quick marinade. This is not something that's gonna stay in your fridge for months on end, um, but it's really tasty. I, I really like this recipe a lot. So for this one, um, the recipe calls for baby artichokes. I had a really hard time finding baby artichokes, but I've made it before. 
with the larger artichokes um, just cut down into smaller wedges. So that's what I have here. I started to do some of them and they're in my, my bowl of water here. And so I'm just gonna finish up with a couple more of these. Um, so I just wanted to show you this. <laughs> I'll show you in the backyard too. This big giant purple one came from my backyard. This one's probably a little too far past this point. <laughs> the leaves are starting to splay out a little bit. So when you're shopping and looking for these, you want to find artichokes where the leaves are still nice and tight and, and bunched up, you know, firmly around the, the thistle part. So for my uh, marinated artichokes, I'm just going to finish up this one. I have the the um, stem trimmed off and I have a few of the leaves pulled off. You want to kind of grab your really tough outer leaves. I'm going to save these in a bowl because what we can do with these, and I won't necessarily show you today, but I just want, kind of wanted to explain, um, these could be sauteed or braised or even steamed just on their own. And then you have them to, to eat as well. So we'll talk a little bit more about that um, later. Okay, so here I am. It's the same procedure as the other artichokes I just did. I'm going to trim this down and I'm going to scoop out my choke, but then I'm just going to cut it down a little bit more. So out goes the fuzzy part. All right, there's the first one. You might also see some purple leaves inside. And if those pull out easily, that's fine too. They can come out. All right, I got my other one. I'll throw that in my, my lemon water. <clears throat> okay. All right. There we are, Just that a dip. So again, I've got my little cavity in the bottom here. You can see this one has a little more of the purple leaves on the inside. And I'm gonna stick with my serrated knife because that seems to be doing the job a little better today. So I'm cutting each half into four sections, which means we'll have about eight wedges per artichoke on this recipe. Okay, so there's that one. And I did the other ones earlier. So here's my other half on that one. Make sure I get all the choky part out. Oh, I've got a little more. There we go. And again, if you can find baby artichokes, this is um, really best suited for smaller ones, but don't be afraid to, you know, to try it with the large ones. Okay. And if you do use the baby artichokes, then in that case, you might really just be having it. Um, and scooping out the little choke, and then you're good to go. You don't have to cut it down quite so much. So a couple, I can see I've missed a couple large pieces there, or large, um, tough leaves on the outside. Let me just take those out. Okay, so meanwhile, um, this is probably enough. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do another one really quick. This is one from my garden. <clears throat> So again, I'm kind of getting all the rough leaves off. All this snapping going on. Okay, now there's a few left on here, but now they're kind of in the middle. So I'm gonna save those because they're gonna be a little more tender. And what you'll do is um, after you steam them, once you have these, then to eat them, you can dip them in something and then you know, scrape it against your teeth. So that's kind of how you'd be eating those just like you would do with the large ones. The marinated ones that we're gonna do in this pot are going to be tender enough since we've kind of gotten down to the bottom or the, the inside part. Those should be good to just eat whole. So I'm just gonna shave. This is one from my garden and it looks like the, the stalk part was a little tough. I can kind of feel it. <clears throat> it's a little bit tougher than the other one. All right, one more round of choke removal. And then we'll start heating up oil. So lemon is a really good friend of artichoke, whether it's um, being used in a salad dressing, in the marinade, in the dip, after you've cooked the artichoke, 
coordinates really well. <clears throat> so you're going to see a lot of lemons happening here today, too. Let me go into their little water bath. Okay, that actually looks like about enough. One of these was really big, so I think I'm just gonna leave this one in the water and I'll, I might steam that one later. All right, so for our marinade, we're gonna need some lemon pieces and parts, including the zest, the juice, and some peel. So I have one lemon here that, that I have um, a couple like two inch peels that I just took off with a, a peeler and we're gonna add one more. So we need about three strips of lemon peel. So I'm just using a regular vegetable peeler to take that off. <clears throat> and then we're going to need some zest. So I use a microplane for that, which is this thing. And I don't think we need a whole lot of zest. Let's see. About a half a teaspoon. I'm just going to keep all these things separate. They kind of go in at different times. Okay, that looks like more than enough. So, stash that over here on my little tray. All right. Then we need some juice, equaling about a quarter cup. So I'm going to use the lemon that I've already zested until we have a quarter cup of, of uh, juice. These are Meyer lemons. I have a Meyer lemon tree in my backyard too. So kind of a good use of, of these, especially now when they're starting to get a little bit big and they're definitely juicy. Okay, so there's my quarter cup of juice. All right, I'm gonna save this for a little bit later too. All right, so we're going to put the lemon zest strips, which are here, into my saucepan. And then um, we've already got the artichokes kind of ready to go. Um, so now we're going to um, add some garlic, thyme, salt and pepper, and some red pepper flakes. So I have garlic. I've got about eight cloves of garlic here that I've already taken the little skins off of. And I've smashed about six of those. So the smashed garlic is going to go in here. You could also use green garlic. If anyone has gotten green garlic in their CSA box, or if you see it at the farmer's market, it's one of those things that um, isn't around very long, but we're just winding down on the green garlic season. So if any of you have that, feel free to use the, um, the white the white and kind of light green parts of your green garlic. It's basically a baby garlic bulb is what it is. And so you can just cut like maybe a, um, like a half inch piece of that and just give it a little smash and throw that in. I've done that before, it works great. Um, so we've got our garlic, I've got some thyme sprigs. <clears throat> this recipe calls for two, I ended up with, I don't know what I have here, four, I don't know. Let's put in about three, that looks good. And then we've got our salt, pepper, um, did I forget to say add the oil? Let's see here. Sorry, choke. Oh, yeah, the oil goes in there too. Okay. Sorry, I had to just give my recipe a double take there. I thought maybe I forgot to, forgot about the olive oil. Okay, so yeah, we need oil. So this is about two and a half cups of olive oil. Feel free to just use any basic oil from the store because you're using a lot of it. However, at the end of this recipe, after we kind of strain and then repack it into the jar, definitely keep the oil mixture. It is fantastic on fish and salads and all kinds of stuff. So um, we'll, we'll get to that at the end. All right, so back to what we have going on here. We've got the oil with the lemon zest strips, the garlic, the thyme, and we're gonna add the um, salt. So we've got a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. <clears throat> so there's my salt. I'm just going to eyeball the black pepper. And then it's up to you how many red pepper flakes you want to add. Um, I think this calls for about a quarter teaspoon. So if you like it spicy, go for more. If you don't, 
then go for less. So there's my red pepper flakes. All right. Okay. Um, okay. All right, time for the artichokes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna just kind of add the artichokes in a little at a time. Let me get my temperature. Okay. All right, so we've got all aromatics in there. And now I'm just gonna kind of add in my artichoke wedges. And we, I just wanna make sure that they're kind of submerged in the oil. I'm gonna kind of shake off some of the water. <clears throat> Grab a spoon. Okay, there's room for more. That's good. That's a good size one. Okay. Okay. That looks good. I may not have room for all of those in there. All right. Okay, so my artichokes are in with the oil, the salt, the pepper, the garlic, the thyme, all the good stuff. And I'm just kind of mixing it around so that um, the artichokes get oil all over them and they're kind of tucked, tucked down into the olive oil. All right. Okay, so we're gonna wait for this to come to a rapid simmer and then we're gonna turn it down um, and let it, like, we're kinda gonna let it simmer rapidly for a solid like five or 10 minutes. And then we're just gonna let it kind of sit for like, you know, 20-ish. So we don't have to have the heat on the whole time, but I do want it to get up to a pretty rapid boil. All right, then at the end, we will fold in some of this other stuff that I already did, including some mint over here too. Um, okay, and then I'll show you how to pack it. So while we're waiting for this, I'm gonna go ahead and mince up my last couple cloves of garlic. This is gonna go in um, to the marinated artichokes at the end. So I'm just gonna get that ready to go. And then we will try to take a little trip out to the yard to see a plant. <clears throat> so for for the mincing, again, these are already uh, shelled. The little papery parts are off. So I'm just gonna chop this up. You could also use a garlic press. That would work fine too. All right. All right, I hear a little sizzling in here, and that's good. I see little bubbles, it's starting to do its thing here. Just wanna make sure everything is pushed down into the oil. We may have to stir it on occasion, just to kind of circulate and keep things moving around. All right, that looks good. Okay, all right. Let's go to the yard. So I'm going to, I think I'm just gonna have to take my whole laptop with me. So here we go. <laughs> my backyard, you might see a mess. I have two boys. So, all right, let's see here. Da, 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 da. All right, let's see if I can do this. So here, I don't know if you guys can even see this. There it is. So this one started growing up and then it went sideways and um, 
it's kind of like at an angle here out of the, <laughs> the raised bed. So it's got one there that looks like it's about ready to be picked. There's a huge one down here at the bottom. And then back here is another one, which is more purple. So this one is growing a little more upright, like it, I think that it would. Yeah, and these are ready to be picked. They're about the size of the other one. So we should, uh, I'll come back and harvest later. So there they are. They do take up a lot of space, but they're kind of fun. Stephanie, there are a few questions and requests, and I was wondering if now might be a good time for some of those. Sure. Let me get this thing plugged back in and adjusted. Um, and you know what? This door was open. I wonder no, if it we, was noisy. Was it noisy? No, no, it, it was fine. <laughs> but there were actually okay. a few requests, and I was thinking while you had the camera mobile, um, folks were asking if they could see inside the pot yeah. or see a close-up of the wedges. Yep. Sure. Let's see if I can just kind of disconnect. And you said it was eight cloves of garlic that went into the pot? There were six that were smashed that went into the pot. So you kind of want these to be in a single layer and, um, you know, just kind of just underneath the olive oil. Can you guys kind of see that? And as you, you know, and we're definitely simmering right now. I just turned the heat down a little bit. So that's that. And let's see, what else? Um, yeah, these, these wedges are really pretty large. I would, I would go for a smaller artichoke. I kind of had, this was one from my yard that was a little overgrown. So I would aim for, you know, smaller than those if you can. Um, you know, like I said, the original recipe was for baby artichokes. They will be a little more tender not to say that this won't work, but you will have, um, you know, less of those really tough outer leaves to deal with and, and pick off, you know, if needed. So, okay. And there was a question about baby artichokes, if that's just younger ones of any kind or specific varieties. Yeah, you know, I meant to look that up. I, I don't know if it's just the smaller one and they pick it early. I have a feeling though that it's, th there are different varieties and that they come, you know, they, they're mature when they're small basically and that's it. So I, yeah, I, I don't have a conclusive answer but I feel like it's just a different variety and they just don't grow as big as these globe ones that I have out here. So, yeah. Okay, any other questions for the moment? There was one about the uh, induction uh, oh, cooktop induction you're burner? using. Sure. Yeah. So this is a wearing. Um, so this is a commercial grade one. Um, you can kind of see it's got this thing on the back as if you were to like, you know, bolt it onto the wall. Um, and then you do need special pans for induction. However, I have noticed that some brands are making pans now that are kind of induction friendly. Um, but typically you need to check your pans. There's, it's a magnetic, um, kind of like magnetism and magnetic reaction that happens down here when the metal from the pan hits the, the cooktop on the, the induction burner. So not everything will work. Cast iron typically does work on induction and then you just have to look for other pans that are induction friendly. Um, this one has a heat setting so it's, which is measured by watts, which is kind of odd. And then there's a temperature setting, which is like, you know, Fahrenheit, 250, 280, 320. Um, it goes up to 500 degrees. And right now I've got it at like 380 just for this simmering thing. So, yeah. Um, but it's, the, it's electric, so it's not gonna use up, you know, gas. Um, so if you don't have a gas line or something, um, it is kind of a handy thing and it's, I feel like it's not going to create as much heat as running your gas range, which I have over there. Um, you know, as soon as I slide this thing off, you know, yes, I do feel a little bit of heat coming off, but you know, if you 
don't have air conditioning <laughs> and don't want to fire up, you know, a, a range top with, with a, a, you know, a flame, it's a good option. So, yeah. Were there any other specific questions about it or just wanted to? No, just yeah. wondering what it was and I what hadn't it identified it. So I appreciate yeah. those who pointed it out. Um, <laughs> and there is some discussion now that I guess Google is saying, yeah, baby artichoke can, is just a smaller uh, version of the traditional artichoke. Of the globe, okay. So, um, and, and somebody else is saying a primary shoot's usually bigger and then the side shoots are smaller, so. Oh, good, yeah. Good conversation around artichokes. Good, okay, excellent. <laughs> Thanks for doing that research on the fly. <laughs> awesome. All right, so just a couple other um, cooking methods that I thought I would discuss while we're waiting for these things. Um, kind of a traditional way would be to steam them. So that can be accomplished with, you know, a large saucepan and then just a steamer basket. The water goes underneath the steamer basket and then you can leave them whole. I'm just, you know, I'm not gonna, this will be my little demonstration one here. It's pretty big though. So again, you would just cut off the, um, the stem if you want or trim it down and then it would just, uh, you know, trim off your outside parts and I think I usually saw off that top third as well and then just park it into the steamer basket, put on a tight fitting lid and then just let it go on your stovetop simmering for probably at least half an hour. And I recommend using a rather large pan. Um, first of all, you have to fit these large things in there but you also wanna have enough water available so that you're not burning off all the water and you know, ruining your pan. So just be aware because it's, they do have to cook for a while. Um, check your water frequently. You might have to add more water as you're going, um, but that's a pretty straightforward, easy way to, to prepare them as well. Um, one other way that I also have done is put them in the slow cooker. <laughs> so in this case, you know, I don't have it. This isn't a really big slow cooker, but I could probably fit two of these well, maybe not two of these, but two normal sized artichokes in here. Um, same idea as steaming, you just put some water and I would definitely add some lemon juice to that, you know, make a little concoction of water and lemon juice in the bottom. Uh, you could definitely also throw in some smashed garlic or whatever you wanna do. Don't bother adding any salt um, or pepper to the water mixture. You really just wanna have a liquid in there so that you can steam your artichoke and what I think I did in the past was I cranked it up to high and let it go for about four hours. Um, or, you know, if you want to do low for longer than that, you can too. So it's kind of an experiment. I feel like slow cookers, you know, the lows and the highs are kind of different according to what brand you have and all of that. So, <clears throat> but this is also a, another good option. Um, you don't get as much depth of flavor as we will on the roasted version that's in the oven, but it does, it does work, you know, as a, a steaming method for the artichokes. So there's, there's that. All right. And I think this has probably been simmering long enough. I can see that the, the color has changed. I'm going to stab one with a knife and just kind of see how they're coming along. I want it to be Kind of, um, kind of tender. I'm going my pairing. Let's see, grab one for over here. So I'm, I'm kind of just hitting it right into where like the heart is, which is that bottom section. So these feel pretty tender actually. So I think we're, we're good there. Um, so I'm gonna just turn this off and let them sit here for a little bit longer. Um, and then what we're gonna do is mix in the other things and I'm gonna pack them into a jar. Um, so that will be next. Before we do that though, I'm gonna check the ones in the oven. We'll just kind of see what they look like and see how they're coming along. <clears throat> I think it's, yeah, it's probably been about about half an hour. All right, let me grab another towel here. Hot, hot, hot. Oh yeah, and then we have our aioli to do. Maybe there's something else. So the foil doesn't exactly get hot, but the steam 
will give you a bad burn. So just be careful when you do this. Okay, those are actually looking kind of nice. The outer leaves will start to turn a little bit brown and there's a little bit of a caramelization that happens in there. So they look kind of hard to see on this camera. I'm seeing a little bit of golden color on the outer leaves that are, that are up. So again, I'm just gonna kind of poke, poke around on the, the heart part. It's, we're close. I feel like maybe another five minutes or 10 and these will be done. So I'm gonna wrap it back up, make sure it's sealed tightly. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is that your, the liquid that was in here, which was just a little bit of that lemon water has mostly evaporated. And so now it's kind of done with the steaming phase and now it's doing a little bit more of the roasting phase, which is what gives it that nice, um, nice, car nice caramelization and helps with the flavor. All right. Okay. All right, so let's finish this up. I'm not gonna, you know, it, they felt tender enough. I mean, if, if we think that they're not done, you can let it sit for a while and they'll keep cooking. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you kind of what to do next here. So at this point, <clears throat> we're going to put in, oh, I need to chop the mint. Hello. Never mind. Hold that thought. Um, I'm going to put in two or three tablespoons of mint. And this is just like add-ons that are going to go into my marinade. Um, and so let's talk about what you can do with these yummy marinated artichokes. So once they are all done, they will keep in the fridge for at least a week. I would say maybe even 10 days. Um, the original recipe, I think, said like four days, but no, I've, I've made it before and it's, it's all good. Um, so the olive oil will definitely kind of solidify a little bit but you just have to kind of let it sit out at room temp for a little while and then everything will kind of soften up. Or you could even just scoop some out, throw it in a bowl and microwave it for maybe like 10 seconds just to kind of get it unsolidified. Okay. So we have mint, we have our lemon juice that we did earlier and we have the lemon zest, which is here and our minced garlic. And then we'll add some additional salt just to taste in here. I'm going to put all this in here. Okay. Give this one more mix. Now, I think there's some goofy instructions here about straining it and then putting the oil back in. Yeah, I guess it's easier to manage that way. Um, also, what you want to do now at this point is pull out the thyme sprigs. The leaves have kind of come off, and so now we've just got the stems in there. So I believe the straining is mostly to get rid of the, the thyme sprigs, but these are large enough I can just see them and pull them out. Okay. Everything else just stays in, into the marinade. So... And again, I think just to make it, you know, you could strain it if you want. I believe that it just kind of depends on how big or small your artichokes are and how, uh, what size your jar is. And it's really about ease of handling <laughs> these things to get them into the jar. So, but otherwise at this point, you know, once we let this, you, you can let this cool down, but the next step is essentially just to pack them into a jar glass jar and then just pour the oil in and you're good to go. So these guys are wonderful on like a bruschetta. Um, fantastic mixed into like pasta or couscous. It's really good with fish or chicken. And if you have extra oil, Definitely save it, refrigerate it. It has to be refrigerated. It won't last just at room temperature. You have to get it in the fridge. Um, but the oil can be used, um, you know, like I said earlier, you can use it as kind of a, a base for a dipping sauce for bread. You could throw it on some potatoes. Um, I had it drizzled on top of some salmon, which was 
totally amazing. Okay, so there's all my artichokes kind of packed into my jar. And I'm putting all everything in there. I got the lemon uh, peels, the garlic, definitely keep in there because I eat that. Good. Okay, I think that's enough. All right. So I do have a little more solids in here. So I will need to do a little straining routine here just to get <clears throat> get some of those solids out. I'm just gonna use this bowl. Okay, but I want some of these solids to go into the jar because that's where all the good stuff is. I just have a, some extra parts here that are, I don't have room for it. I'm actually gonna pull, there's a big lemon, one of those peels there. I'm not gonna eat that. It kind of can go in for flavor, but I'm running out of room here in my jar. So, okay, there. So now I've got in my strainer, it's basically just all of the red pepper flakes and the minced garlic uh, and some of that mint. So I want that to go in here. And then I've got my oil. So now I just kind of top it off. Let's see if I have room for all of it. I don't know if I will or not. Oh, maybe. Yep. Oh, there's a little bit left over. Okay. And that's it. So this is really hot right now. So I highly recommend waiting <laughs> to kind of let this cool down to room temperature before you go through the straining and packing routine. Um, but once you get to this point, then you just, you know, seal it up and keep it in your fridge. And then it's ready to go whenever you want to have your, your artichokes. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to think what else. I mean, I just find that the flavor on this is really tasty. You know, again, there's a lot of flavor in the leftover oil too. So feel free to experiment and put it on top of, you know, lots of different things. It'd even be good on like other grilled vegetables too. Uh, okay, what else? Let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to talk to you about. I know I have the other ones in the oven. Um, I don't think so. Let me grab my aioli stuff. Let me put that together really quick and then I'll pull the, um, the roasted artichokes out. So I need one more little bowl. This is kind of the cheater's version of aioli. Normally it would be like in a blender with some egg and you know you emulsify. Uh, so we're gonna just do the little shortcut here. This aioli recipe actually came from a, pa a paella recipe that I have. And it's a seafood paella. And so it's really, really tasty, kind of dabbed on top of that. But I find that it's, it goes well with a lot of other things, including artichokes or on sandwiches or whatever. It would be good, um, I think, with like art uh, asparagus. I'm getting my, my vegetables confused here. So it's really just mayo with garlic and some lemon and salt and pepper. What I'm gonna do with the garlic though is I'm gonna make a little paste. So I've got kosher salt back here. I minced this down a little bit and now I'm gonna do a, a little sprinkle of the kosher salt. And then I'm gonna kind of like rub my knife over it like this. Sorry, I have a lot of like bright sun coming through here. So I don't know how easy this is to see. So I'm just kind of rubbing and scraping. The salt is acting like, you know, an ab abrasive here to kind of mash down my garlic. Just be careful. You can see how my fingers are kind of on the blade here. I'm just kind of swiping the garlic back and forth with the knife and the salt is helping to break it down. <clears throat> and eventually this will kind of turn into a nice little paste. So I didn't even really measure my garlic. This was about two cloves, I think. So it'll be extra garlicky, which is yummy. <clears throat> and we just need a little more lemon juice and lemon zest for this too. Okay, that looks pretty good. This is one of these tasks that you could do forever and have super, super smooth garlic paste, or you can get halfway there and say, okay, that's good enough. So <laughs> it might be a little chunky, that's all right. All right, so there's the garlic paste. And when you need a little more lemon zest, get my zester back out here. So about half a teaspoon. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. This is, you know, not rocket science here. You can add more lemon or less depending on how you like it. 
Okay. And then we do um, some juice also. So a little more lemon juice. Gonna do about one and a half tablespoons. Give or take, okay. And then we have our mayonnaise. So I recommend finding kind of a good quality mayonnaise. I like this Sir Kensington stuff. Kind of recently found that. So we're gonna need about half a cup. And you know, it's basically just everything kind of into a bowl and mix it up and you're done. So pretty easy. <clears throat> the lemon juice is gonna thin down your mayo concoction here a little bit. So it's not gonna be super thick. And another option is sometimes I drizzle a little olive oil in here too, your call. A um, little salt and pepper to taste and then that's basically done. Okay, I think I got it all in there. Just juice, garlic, yep. So you just wanna whisk this together. Um, sometimes you will need a whisk. If your mayo is a little lumpy for some reason, just take a whisk and go at it and it'll smooth it out. Okay, so that's all there is to that, pretty simple. Let's see how our roasted artichokes are doing. out of the way. All right, so again, I want to, I'm gonna see if I can move the camera so you guys can see this again too, because this is, you see there's a little bit of the caramelization and the leaves kind of have these little brown Tinges to them. I don't know if that's where that was. Hopefully that'll work. Oh yeah, here I am. Um, so one thing that I kind of like to do to test the doneness is just grab an outer leaf and if it pulls off kind of easily without me fighting it too much, then we're good to go. So that seems to be the case here where it just kind of, they lift off. So, yep, we're good. <clears throat> And then for eating, you just take a leaf and you dip it into your aioli and then you scrape the stuff off with your teeth. And work your way down. Hmm, those are good. All right, so that is everything. Um, again, we'll talk about these a little bit and then I'll wrap it up. Put this over here. So again, the leaves that we had earlier, these were some of my kind of, you know, not the outer ones that are really tough, but kind of a couple layers in. So you could braise these, uh, braising meaning that I might start with sauteing and then add a liquid like some stock or some water, um, that kind of thing, put the lid on and then let it finish by steaming. So you might notice that a lot of these procedures that we're doing with the artichokes, there's a little bit of some kind of a steam thing going on. <laughs> with all of the different procedures, either straight up steaming with a steamer basket or with the braising, you know, you kind of start with the saute and then you add liquid, cover, let it finish by steaming. Or in the case of the roasted, we kind of started with the steaming and then it transitioned over to just roasting with the, the dry heat once all the liquid was evaporated. Um, so that's an option. We could also just put these into the steamer basket that I showed earlier um, with the water underneath just to kind of cook them through. But I think they'd be really much tastier if you kind of started with a saute of some sort with, and added some you know, garlic and some other good stuff there. So, um, all right, I think that is about it. Um, there's one other thing that I did want to mention um, in terms of storage. So typically after I buy these, they tend to do fairly well just in a plastic bag. Um, I would maybe punch a, a couple holes in the bag just for some air, um, you know, circulation or maybe, and also maybe stick a little paper towel around them, a little damp paper towel. 
but they do hold up fairly well, like at least a week in the fridge. So go ahead and try to find them at your farmer's market. You know, you'll see them at the grocery store around this time. And if you're ever like over by Monterey and the coast over there, there's an abundance <laughs> growing over there too. So any other questions, Allison? Yeah, there were a few more and a couple of people clarified that I guess in Europe, baby artichokes are young, but in the US they're fully mature of a different kind. So I guess there's some, <laughs> there's some the changes debate goes there. on, yeah, um, depending there on where were, you are. Yeah, there were a couple of questions on the marinated artichokes. Um, how long will those last in the refrigerator? How, how quickly should you use them? So I would plan on using them probably within about 10 days or so. Um, you know, the, the original recipe on this said like four or five days, but you know, I feel like we've got it's like they're in, you know, a, a marinade almost. I mean, a mar they are in a marinade, but it's like a vinaigrette, right? So I feel like refrigerated, um, they'll be fine for, you know, seven to 10 days for sure. So, okay. yeah. And with those, can you eat the, the whole thing or do you still have to skim the leaves? So if we had the baby artichoke, um, you could probably eat the whole thing because we didn't have as many of those tough outer leaves. In the case of this version that I made today, where we had these larger artichokes and I was, you know, dealing with the, the outer leaves, you may come across a leaf or two that's tough. And to avoid that, you just want to keep peeling away until you're down to like the light green section of the artichoke. Um, I don't even know. This, we, could, we could see what's in here, although this one's purple. So we might have a whole different color altogether in there. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's, that way too. So after I get a few layers off, you know, you can see there's this lighter section down here. So you kind of want to peel till you get to at least that. Now this thing is like overgrown, but if you had a smaller one, there will be a point as you're peeling where you get more of the light green and less of the dark green. So that's your goal basically. Um, and then I, like I said, I kind of halved it and then quartered and then cut it again. So one of my large artichokes had about eight wedges. Um, this recipe with the baby artichokes, it calls for three pounds. You know, you're gonna use about two to three of the larger ones if you do the wedges. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and then there were a couple of equipment questions. So one question is, can you, I know you've shown us how to sharpen knives before. There was a question of whether you can sharpen a bread knife because, um, yeah, yours looks really <laughs> sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one, um, yeah, it is pretty sharp. I have a, a few bread knives and maybe that's why this one's sharp because I haven't used this one as much. You know, I don't know if my sharpener does serrated. That's a really good question. I usually don't try to sharpen my own serrated knife. I usually just take them to a knife sharpener. Um, but let's see if there's anything on here that says serrated or not. Huh. I mean, they talk about global knives. This is kind of what this was, that, you know, it's happiest with global knives, which are not, it's usually those um, Santokus and chef knives. Yeah, I don't see anything on here about using serrated. So I would say take your serrated to a, an actual knife sharpener person. Um, I've never heard or seen people using a steel on a serrated knife. So yeah, I think you need to go to, to somebody. And, and eventually, I mean, I do have a couple bread knives that are worn down. I mean, eventually these little bumps here will just get smaller and smaller and there's just really not much of a way to fix that. You know, you just have to replace the knife after a while. So yeah. Okay. Um, and then last of all, you talked a little bit about the induction burner. There was a question on if you're making these recipes, you know, is your regular stove burner just fine? Um, yep. Yep. Yeah. The only reason this is here is because it's closer to all of you and closer to the camera and stuff. And I have this <laughs> set up behind me, so it's hard to, to show anything on my actual stove. So yeah, absolutely. I, I, the last time I made this, I just, you know, used my own stove, which is a gas, um, 
a gas range top, <clears throat> same procedure, same exact thing. 